two, three. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by Matt Darby. You have heard, uh, if you've been listening to our podcast, talking about some of the best interceptions in Bill's history. Uh, and we promised you we'd produce uh, a player that was uh, had one of those, and we want to get into that <clears throat> and much more with Matt Darby. Uh, played six years in the league, four with the Bills, uh, 1992 fifth-round draft pick, uh, coming as a, uh, an All-American out of UCLA. And uh, Matt, thanks for joining us. And where are you calling from this morning? Well, thank you for having me. And I am here in the uh, Central Florida area, a little north of Orlando. In All right. Beautiful. So, so Matt, you know, uh, Don and I a couple weeks ago just kind of had a impromptu conversation, and he had mentioned your name, and I said, "Oh, Matt Darby." I'm like, he had one of the greatest interceptions in Bill's history, and it prompted us to to post on Twitter on our Twitter account at If Buffalo, uh, asking people what was the greatest interception in you know regular season interception in Bill's history, right. and and me personally being you know a child of the 90s and, and you know my four high school years were the four Super Bowl years growing up in Buffalo. Yours was my pick. I remembered yours immediately. It, I thought it was I thought it was the most important and most impactful regular season interception in Bill's history. A lot of the younger people, you know, Sam Adams had the big one that made the covers mm -hmm. Sports Illustrated, and Drayton, Don right. has Drayton Florence because he was the director of football administration. Then I guess maybe we can start there and then go back to like you know. Your, your high school and college days. Can you talk us through that play and kind of make the case with me as to why we're going to win that this is the greatest regular season uh, interception in Bill's history? Oh, uh, so the magic there is 13-10. Aikman's pass for Novacek tip, intercepted by Matt Darby the dinosaur. His first career interception, none bigger in Buffalo Bill history. Jerry Jones has seen his team fall to 0-2. And the Bills extract revenge there, 2-0. and Buffalo winning in Dallas, third. Well, that, that, that game was uh, interesting. Obviously, the kind of the, the context of the game was it was between our, our two Super Bowls. Obviously, uh, Dallas uh, kind of gave it to us uh, the year in the previous Super Bowl uh, that, that, that previous year. And uh, we were looking to, to make a statement, and, and obviously they didn't have their their big gun, you know, uh, Emmett uh, there uh, in the field. So obviously we wanted to take advantage of that and, and beat them nonetheless, um, just to, to send a message that you know uh, that we're not going anywhere and that we're gonna uh, you know be here um, for the long haul. So uh, it was a good game. Um, obviously it came down to the end, and with Dallas, everybody knows with Dallas it's it's their big three. It's it's Troy. It's uh, Irvin and it's uh, the tight end. What's, what's his name? The tight end. Novacek. Jay Novacek. Yeah. Novacek. Uh, uh, and, and, and Emmett. It was the running game and the passing game. And 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 Aikman had uh, his receivers, but his go-to guy when he needed a play was Novacek, you know, mm -hmm. his tight end. So down there on the in, in the red zone, um, obviously Emmett wasn't there. So that was a, 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 a not going to be – not going to happen. So – I knew they weren't going to run, uh, and we knew that you know we were going to tie up uh, you know Irvin, uh, so it would be difficult to get to him. So I was thinking, you know what? I have a high probability that it's going to be coming to to Novacek. Uh, so uh, when the play started, uh, I Novacek coming up the field, up right up the seam, and I'm trying to bait Aikman into throwing the ball. So I kind of hesitated before jumping him, um, and that kind of you know, uh, allowed him to think that he was open. Then as soon as he started uh, cocking the ball, I jumped on it. And that's how I got to the ball uh, and was able to, it bounced up in the air and seemed like it stayed for, for the longest. Uh, and it just dropped into my hands. So uh, you say dropped into your hands. That was a heck of an athletic play. You made the contact. I love how you say you baited him. The ball probably did seem like it was up in the air forever, but you dove, you laid out mm -hmm. and you, you know, your hands got just underneath it. Yeah. And you hauled it in before it hit the ground. And uh, yeah. I remember a couple things. I was at that game. I didn't normally travel with the team at that point in my career, but it was a big game that the team wanted to take uh, sponsors to. So they brought me as kind of just an extra person. Um, mm -hmm. And it was hot. I mean, it was yeah. week two in Dallas. It was, it was, uh, I almost passed out from, you know, so I can't imagine what it, it was like uh, on yeah. the field. And then Josh recalls, uh, 
last week, week we were talking about this play where, you know, Jerry Jones is already down on the field. Yeah. Ready to celebrate. That's the best visual is him <laughs> in the tunnel, you know, kind of inching towards the field as if they're going to have like a walk-off win. And then, you know, you right. catch the ball and pop up and he just turns around and storms back through right. the tunnel, which is just so great after, you know, you know, three straight Super Bowl losses and the whole narrative that, you know, the Bills yeah. can't win the big one and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it was such a big regular season game and it really, yeah. uh, you know, set the tone for that, that year's team. And I just, yeah. it, that's why it's personally, you know, my, my favorite regular season interception in Bills history. And I think anybody over the age of like, you know, what, 40 yeah. probably yeah. agrees with me, but. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Another thing, Josh, you mentioned too last week is um, it was only a three point game. Yeah. So if, if they don't, mm -hmm. if, you know, they, they still had a chance to. Yeah. If you don't catch a, that, a it's still a field goal and who knows what happens. Yeah. In overtime, right? An yeah. amazing, an amazing play. So I, I appreciate your advocacy. I'm going to, I'm going to fight the fight on Twitter when we put the poll up <laughs> and we're going to have both Sam Adams and Drayton Florence on to argue their <laughs> cases. But Matt, I'm, I, I know we just met, but I'm with you. One, you. one more thing I remember too, is I didn't hear it at the time because it was in the stands, but when you replayed the game, and you heard the radio call. Uh, Greg Brown okay. was doing the color. We had Greg Brown on. He loses his mind to yeah. the point of just just hysteria. He, I think he admits it. Like it was one of the most excited he's ever been at, at a play, and it came through. What was it like? Did you get a lot of national buzz for that play? Because I'm, I'm assuming that was the national game of the week. Then, like, did you get a lot of uh, publicity, or you know, did anything change uh, for you after that play? I I don't believe I did. Uh, I, I might I may have, but I, I wasn't kind of paying attention to it uh, really that the main thing for for me uh was that it that win helped kind of set the tone like you said it, it helped set the tone for us um and, and and us versus you know dallas and the nfc and, and all that stuff uh that narrative that we couldn't beat you know the, the big teams in the, in the nfc uh mm -hmm. so obviously it, they didn't have emmett so that was the excuse that they used uh mm -hmm. but uh, it was still a win is a win. You know, there's no asterisks next to the wins. So a, a win is a win. So uh, we proved that, hey, we can beat Dallas. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, putting a good game together um, and uh, executing um, that we know how, how we can execute. Absolutely. Well, that's that's great. I love how <clears throat> all the details you remember about that. So going back um, in your career, um, how, how do you end up at, at UCLA? Um, I noticed you were also... Uh, a track star uh you yeah. uh led the the state uh state uh, champ in the triple jump so that that certainly didn't hurt but how did how did all that culminate to, to finding yourself at uh, ucla yeah so with ucla uh it's uh funny that i i grew up i was i was born in san diego my dad was in the navy so uh born in uh, san diego uh then but we moved back to we ended up in norfolk uh, at the Navy base out there uh, when I was about three or four years old. Um, so that's all I know. Uh, so I grew up in Virginia uh, and I had really no idea about, I wasn't thinking about UCLA uh, as a going into a senior and everything else. But uh, apparently there was a UCLA uh, grad uh, who lived in, uh, in the local area, in the Norfolk area. And they started, he started sending UCLA uh, some press clippings, uh, local press clippings, and that's how they got interested in me. That's how they uh, <laughs> found out about me. So uh, they recruited me, and with my visits, as everybody, every senior gets five visits to schools. Uh, my the two leading schools that everybody thought I was going to go to was either Virginia or North Carolina, uh, and uh, I also took visits to Georgia and Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee, because again, I was. A, I was good in track, so they allowed a lot of their football stars to, to run track as well. Um, so I took a visit there. Um, loved all those schools. Uh, UCLA, you know what? My thoughts with UCLA, you know what? I was born in San Diego. I have a little family member there. Uh, let me go out and just to see what it's like, see what California is like. It's a free trip. You know, it's, you know, it's a little <laughs> yeah. fun. So I wasn't really serious about them. Uh, but when I got out there, uh, saw the stadium, saw the Rose Bowl, uh, saw the campus, uh, everything just felt right for me right there. And I, I knew on a plane trip going back um, that I was going to go there. Um, I was going to commit there. Um, even though I had my last, I saved my last trip for UVA because they were the front runner, but I knew on my flight trip back that I was going to go there. Uh, and and the, really the biggest negative to that was telling my dad, you know, uh, because he was really looking forward to 
me staying closer to home and uh, being able to come out and see me play and everything else. Um, but really, uh, uh, there was no there was no doubt after I, I made that trip. Were you able to 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 you know run track in college, or was that something that only like certain schools allowed you to do? Well, I I was able to play. I, I was I have one official meet that I participated in at UCLA one spring. Uh, but I realized that, you know, with football, I, I gained too much weight um, and too much huh. muscle mass and really got out of the, the triple jump type of body. Um, so I really wasn't, uh, I, I had a subpar meet, uh, that one meet. So I knew that my, my track here was over uh, by fully committing to, to Interesting. football. So I, that was my one, my one track meet. So, so to play to play safety, you had to bulk up a little bit, and that maybe just cost you just a just a hair, which is all it takes, right? And and tracks you know, tens of seconds and things like that. Well, well, I was uh, in high school. I was all of you know one eighty five, soaking wet, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, but I, my position was a linebacker. I was a, a middle linebacker in, in high school, uh, so obviously I knew. I wasn't going to be able to play linebacker weighing 185, not 190 pounds. So everybody recruited me as a, a DB. Um, there was only one school that was thinking about making me uh, want to recruit me as a running back because uh, I played, you know, both ways. Obviously in high school, um, but yeah, I was. I was. Everybody recruited me as a safety, uh, and uh, obviously UCLA, great reputation for uh, developing safeties. Uh, and one of the things, one of the reasons I chose UCLA ended up because. Uh, at the time, ACC wasn't a, a, a passing conference. Hmm. Pac-12 was. Uh, so I, I wanted to develop myself as a, a safety in one of the better conferences uh, that were in passing. That's conference. really interesting. Yeah, the, that that's that's true back then. Uh, just uh, Don and I also bulked up, and that, that ended our track careers. As well. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. a little, little yeah. different. Uh, yeah. so, Having kids and eating the, finishing right. their Applebee's French right. fries. Yeah, right. so, 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 Matt, you're at UCLA. Uh, obviously, you know, your, your career there went well. When did you uh, kind of know internally that the NFL was an option? And then maybe you can talk us through, you know, your draft day and, you know, your combine experience and how that all came to be that, you you know, got the call from the Bills. Uh, what time did I think the NFL would be a possibility? Uh Man, that's that's tough. I guess it kind of slowly evolved. Um, I, I, obviously, my first year I redshirted. Very disappointed in being uh, having a redshirt, but um, you know my coaches knew better than. Obviously, every athlete, uh, a highly recruited athlete, is going to have his his ego um, ahead of him. Uh, so I thought I was just as good as the the starter uh, at UCLA at that time, a, a senior. But you know I, I wasn't, uh, so I did need some time to develop, especially coming from a, a linebacker. And learning how to play as a safety um, that took me some time to develop. But um, I ended up starting after my redshirt year. I started uh, my last four years there. Um, so I started as a, a redshirt freshman. Um, uh, I have a, uh, I guess I'm known. My college days are known by my uh, have a great, a big hit uh, against Nebraska my freshman year. Um, that was on national television when we were like, I think we were both ranked either number two and number three uh, respectively in in the the, the national polls. Take but, us through uh, that hit. Do you remember it as well as you remember your interception against Dallas? That hit? Yeah. Yes, I remember. Uh, that's that's the hit. I'm I'm mostly. If you Google Matt Darby uh, Nebraska hit, you'll you'll see that hit, and uh, uh, that that's a, a a famous hit of mine that everybody sees when they look up. Um, Nebraska as we start the second quarter of play. The Huskers have done virtually nothing offensively. Third down and eight as Steve Taylor drops one off underneath and a wicked, wicked hit. It is Matt Darby again nailing the Nebraska receiver, Brinson. I mean, he just drove him into the Rose Bowl turf. Bring up my name. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, just being able to uh, be a four-year starter at UCLA um, gave me some confidence that, hey, you know what, maybe I, I do have a chance of uh, being able to uh, make it at the next level. Uh, so, so yeah, that was 
that was one of the, the main things for me. I, I actually just put it in Google right now, and it, the the title of it is one of the hardest hits in college football history. Heck yeah! So wow, that's uh, you know maybe we'll maybe we'll, maybe to, we'll post listen, the link to it. Yeah, you have to listen to it to appreciate it because uh, uh, you'll hear the crowd, uh, and then then they play a slow mo of the the hit. Which, oh, ooh, I've <laughs> seen that. I've seen that. Oh, you have that same like arms up in the air pose <laughs> that you did. After it reminds me of when Nate Clements hit. Uh, Brady when wow. he was uh, woohoo. Okay. Now why did you play with the neck roll? All right, so that was because I had pinched nerves. I had pinched nerves in my neck. Uh so and, and so to keep me on the field to prevent uh the pinched nerves from happening again, they put me in a neck Ooh. brace. Which obviously I took it off during um uh, my NFL career, but uh but yeah, that's why uh, I had it. Okay. So so you, you your career is going well. Um, did you, yeah, all American. Uh, on draft day, did you expect fourth, fifth round? Did you expect earlier? Uh, you know, kind of walk us through what draft day was like for you. Yeah, I think with, with the draft day, I knew that San Francisco was looking for a safety, uh, so and they brought me up to the visit, uh, which was a, a great visit and everything else. Uh, so I was thinking, you know what. My really only chance to be first round would be San Francisco. Uh, I think they ended up taking Dana Hall from University of Washington or something like that. Hmm. Um, uh, and then uh, I really wasn't sure about that. I was probably either, I was thinking three to five. Uh, so uh, I, w I wasn't surprised about that. Uh, but on draft day, uh, you know, it was me and, and my, my fiance at the time. Uh, uh, we were in our apartment, um, just hanging out. We watched, uh, obviously, the, the, the first uh, uh, couple rounds. Uh, then we, uh, we we made plans to go out to, to dinner, you know, because I didn't hear my name the first three rounds or whatever. All right, well, you know, maybe it's not going to happen today. We'll wait for tomorrow. Uh, so we're putting on our coats and everything else. Then the phone rings, and it's Marv. I'm like, hey, Matt, congratulations. We're about to call your name. Oh great! Uh, I didn't tell him we we're about to go out to dinner, but <laughs> but yeah, man, it was it was great. It, it's always great. Obviously, every uh, player wants to hear their name. Um, you know, I didn't actually hear the name, hear it being called um, at that time, but just to get that call from a, a, a pro football head coach uh, saying that hey, we're about to to, to draft you. That's what uh, every player uh, dreams about. Did you have a cell phone back then? They were like just oh no, no cell phones. Yeah, no, cell phones. yeah, they weren't. No, yeah. That was a landline with the long cord. Yeah. <laughs> oh, funny. So what, good timing. Right? What was your reaction when you knew it was Buffalo? Obviously, the team you know had been great, but it's Buffalo, and you were just right. spent the last four years in Los Angeles. <laughs> so was there panic? Was there excitement? What did you feel about coming here? Uh, no, no panic. Uh, I, I think uh, I mean I played in uh, Virginia, so we we get a little bit of snow uh, there, but it's gone like after one one or two days, but. Uh, the biggest thing, my biggest, uh, uh, I guess, worry, we would call it, about Buffalo was turf. I didn't like turf. Uh, for, for a guy who played football, I did not like turf. Uh, and that's probably one of the reasons why I didn't choose Virginia at the time, because they played on turf. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that was, that was my, only, my only worry uh, about Buffalo. So, so you come in um, mini camp. What were your impressions? Did you know any players that were on the roster? H how were those first few days? Josh always likes to ask, like, how how did you get acclimated? How did you find you know yeah, fitting in right away? Or well, it was good because uh, you guys uh, we had uh, Lodish uh, as well as Marvin's Patton from. from oh, yeah. I, I played with both of them. Um, so yeah, they were my former teammates, uh, and also. I had a, a best friend from high school, uh, Keith Goganis. Oh, uh, yeah. He went to Penn State. I, we dra we graduated together in high school and played on the same team. Uh, and he played linebacker next to me and tight end. Uh, and he went to Penn State, played linebacker. I went to UCLA to play DB, and then we got drafted together. So yeah, it was it was a good a good reunion uh, for everybody uh, for both Keith and I, as well as for for Marcus and, and Mike uh, Lodish. So yeah, Mike Lodish. 
Mike Lotus came on and uh, was not not so gracious. Didn't have the best memory of his own draft day yeah, call. Yeah, his his call with Marv uh, went a little bit uh, more sideways than yours. And he <laughs> he he asked him what what bleeping took so long to, to <laughs> uh, which it was very much Mike Lotus. So you're you're at mini camp. You know, obviously the team's really good. And I, and I kind of like to ask the guys who came from smaller schools like Jamie Mueller, Don Beebe, you know, did you feel like you fit in right away? You have a, a completely different path where, you know, you're an All-American, you're on the big stage, yeah. you're playing at the Rose Bowl. Did you feel yeah. like you fit in day one? Did you feel like the NFL was, you know, significantly faster than college football that you had played? Because you played at the biggest levels of college football. Yeah, I, I thought uh, I didn't see it as, you know, uh, much faster. Um and I wasn't I wasn't intimidated uh, by uh, the NFL um, or, or that particular level. Um, I just knew if I was able to execute uh, the way I knew I could, then uh, I would have a good chance of making a team. So, just like I said, you know, the guys I played with, you know, uh, when I was a, a freshman and, and sophomore, a lot of those guys went on to play in the NFL. So by knowing, you know, what, you know, I was able to hang with those guys and practice and, and everything else, and they made it to the NFL. Okay, I'm I'm good with uh, my my chances of, of making it in the NFL as well. Yeah, I remember I was there when you came in, and I I recall. No, I'm not a, a scout. I we had a semi pro team my my freshman year. Oh, we had okay. Troy oh. Aikman. Troy Aikman was our quarterback. Oh, uh, Gaston Green was a running back. Eric Ball was a running back on that wow. same team. We had Ken Norton. We had <laughs> uh, James Washington. We had uh, Daryl Henley. Uh, we had uh, Frank Cornish, a lot of guys. Most of those, a lot of those guys, especially starters, went on to play in the pros. So. That's that would give you the confidence. Did you give Troy a little bit of extra shit after the game because you got him <laughs> after that pick? I didn't even, I didn't even think of that that you guys crossed paths. Did you Norton give him, and James. I didn't, I didn't have a give chance. A little? To, yeah, I didn't have a chance after that game. After my, and he was my first interception um, uh, in a league. So that that was a very special interception for me. Um, and obviously coming off of uh, intercepting a, a Hall of Fame guy like Troy. So, uh, uh, but yeah, I, I wasn't able to, uh, I don't even remember shaking anybody, any Cowboys hands after the game or anything. I just remember going, you know, celebrating, going straight to the locker room. Have yeah. you get, have you, have you given it to him since like at a UCLA event or anything? Come on. You've had to, <laughs> Hey, I got you. No, there, I haven't, honestly, I haven't been back to the UCLA, um, um, or even Buffalo, uh, for matter of fact, uh, hmm. Since I since I left, I've been to UCLA. Man, my wife went back for a uh, a homecoming game. Um, I was able to see um, my coach at the time, um, Donahue, uh, before he passed, uh, and uh, James Washington was there too. So he brought me down to the the sideline. I was able to see the second half on the sideline. So yeah, um, yeah that was yeah. a uh, that was a great experience. He had a big play. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. it was at Super Bowl twenty eight. He was at yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, I remember when you came into the Bills, Matt, and I wasn't a scout or anything, but going back to what Josh says about how maybe advanced you were to be acclimated to the league, you you passed the eye test. Like, I, you see a lot of guys come in, and they're like, I'm sure he's a great player, but, you know, we'll see what they do in their rookie year. But you know in the offseason workout program between years one and two, they're going to get that 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 man strength and, mm -hmm. and be you, – you, you already look like you had it, you know, and I'm sure yeah. the program mm -hmm. at UCLA – prepared you so much you also i was looking at who you're drafted with um is good draft class uh vince morrow i hadn't thought of that name he he looked like yes. he was 45 years old yeah 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 <laughs> vince, vince great great guy man great uh, yeah. we, we make fun of vince all the time so uh, yeah, yeah oh good yeah he looked like really uh, he was, you know, a player coach or something <laughs> so, so matt maybe you can you know people always like to hear from a player's perspective what are what are some of your favorite games some of your favorite memories being here uh, you know, Super Bowl year, Super Bowl years that you were here. What what, what are your what are your favorite memories from from playing here? Uh, favorite memories from playing there. I mean, uh, there's so many. Uh, obviously, um, one of the ones I, I do remember is the uh, our Raiders, our playoff Raiders game. It was like one of the coldest mm -hmm. in NFL history. Mm -hmm. uh, that one uh, for me, I have these skinny skinny fingers. First thing that goes in those freezing games like that, my hands and my toes. Uh, so that's that's kind of rough. But thank God they had those 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 heat benches. Um, I was able to sit on those. But uh, yeah, just uh, my main memories. Just really the Super Bowls, obviously. 
Uh, my first two years in the league, going to the Super Bowl, that's kind of unheard of uh, and, and special. Uh, and uh, and then really, you know, just my year starting, uh, where I was able to start after um, Kelso um, was released or didn't come back. So uh, that year, if I knew how to catch, if I could <laughs> catch a ball, I would have led the league in in, in interceptions or, or been uh, the second or first uh, or something like that. I would have been in the top three, certainly, uh, in interceptions. But well, I just didn't catch the break ball. Breakups. Like breakups, but in your mind, you're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, it could yeah, have been interceptions. Yeah. And you know, an interesting time of your career during the Bills, I noticed you started, you had your first start uh, at the end of the 92 season against the Oilers. And yes. we famously got rolled and it cost us like going from the two seed to the five seed or something like that. You you get injured, not, yeah. you know, it was a thigh bruise or something it says, but then you, it says you played the next week in the, you know, of course, famous um, mm -hmm. uh, comeback. And what, what are your memories of, of those two weeks it said One, I played. Yeah. It said I had. It's I, didn't, same. I know I didn't play because what I have, okay. I got a like in the third or fourth quarter, I got a deep thigh bruise in that uh, game out in Houston, um, and I, it was so bad I, I couldn't play. I couldn't run on it, so I didn't play okay. in the the following game, in the playoff game, the wild card game, uh, with the the, the comeback. Uh, so I was on the sidelines with with Jim uh, and everybody else. Oh, okay. It says you were okay. No, you didn't start, but maybe you were active but didn't play. That's probably why it was. Yeah. What's it? What was it like for you watching that game? Like for Don and I, and I mean, is it is it harder when you're not able to play? Uh, yes, because as an athlete, um, especially at that level, you always think that you can contribute to uh, a win. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously that that first half uh, was not the, the half that we wanted. Uh, it didn't go as planned. Uh, but, and the funny thing about it is, is, you know, we had this big fancy scheme uh, to, to stop them. And obviously the people who know, knows that, you know, that was, it wasn't just a, ha a bad half. We had bad, the previous six quarters um, uh, against them. Um, so it was beating us down for six quarters. Uh, but then we, at that, our halftime adjustments was basically kind of, simplifying our game plan and then that that worked so it's like you don't you don't need big fancy you know uh schemes uh, to stop sometimes uh, stop people sometimes you just need to execute you know uh the, the basics and the fundamentals of football yeah famously they just they kind of junked it all and went back to the, like the base three four right exactly the... yeah <laughs> yeah so and and for and and i'm sure we had some help on their side as far as them their mindset thinking, hey, you know, we got this game won and maybe not have, uh, you know, been totally in full execution mode. But hey, you have, you have to stay stay in that in that in that, mo in that mindset uh, when you're up like that as well. Yeah. So that bought you uh, an extension of the playoffs, and you came back. Uh, you came back yeah. for the Miami AFC Championship yes. game, right? Yep. In yes. Miami. That was yes. a great game. Yeah. It was. Played down there. Got some uh, uh, some good time in that. Uh, yeah. My my first year there was. Uh, I enjoyed playing on the the nickel team, coming in on the nickel team and dime team, uh, to uh, you know just get that experience. That experience part of it um, really uh, is is a big help. So Don, I know you said that um, you know the trip to Berlin would have been the the ninety three season, the fourth Super Bowl. Maybe you know you could share uh, you know what you told Matt before we started this because I think people would be interested in hearing this. Yeah, yeah. Before we came on, uh, I, I had had some correspondence with Matt uh, through LinkedIn, and of course then when things uh, really came to fruition here with the, the uh, playoff talk on our uh, interception. Which talk I will remind people that Matt Darby had the greatest interception yes. in Bill's regular season history, <laughs> which we will settle on Twitter in a couple uh, weeks. That's, yeah, <laughs> but uh, we played in um, we played a preseason game in Berlin uh, that August of, of 93. And uh, I, I had a video camera. I was one of the few people that my parents bought me one and they were, you know, nowadays, you know, everyone's with the cell phones all over, but they were, they were like a big deal. It's kind of like a bazooka. Mm -hmm. So I carried it around. I remember players and everyone else. I think Kenny Davis was the only other one that had one. He's like, Hey, when you get that film, I need a copy, but I lost it for all these years. <laughs> but Matt said uh, that you were on that trip, but um, mm -hmm. it was uh, tough for you because you share what you were telling us before. Yeah. So uh, obviously a, a great, a fun trip uh, for, uh, you know, us going out to, to Berlin uh, especially as a rookie. And 
my wife wanted to go on. They allowed family members to come out with the, the team. Uh, so, uh, but my wife was not able to make the trip because she was in her third trimester. Uh, so she stayed behind. Um, you know, obviously, uh, us made some, some long distance uh, phone calls uh, while we're out there. But um, yeah, the, that was the, one of the just the, the only downer uh, to that trip was her not being able to make that trip. Uh, yeah. So yeah. And then you said that uh, later on, it's it's kind of a, an NFL story where you had to have your, your child induced and you did yes. it on a Tuesday, which people who listen to our show would hopefully know is the off day for the players. So <laughs> I just get a kick out of the fact that you had to in season. Did you play the did you play both games like the week before and, and you know, the Sunday after? Yeah, so I uh, obviously my, my son was due in, in early November uh, that year and I didn't want to miss the birth of my my first child and my wife didn't want me to miss the birth of my first child so uh he was a couple of days late uh and we were having these games coming up uh, so i think one was in uh, miami uh so we just scheduled uh, to get have her induced um, on that tuesday on our day off um so uh yeah i was playing in uh I can't remember if Miami was before or after that game. I think it was um, after his birth, uh, but I think it was uh, before. We went to Miami and came back, and then uh, was there for the birth. Okay, uh, was there it. back back then? Like, if if there would have been a conflict, like, did the team was the team supportive of you missing a game? You know, for the birth of your child, like, how how would it have worked if you know she just gave birth on a Saturday night or a Sunday morning? Mm -hmm. uh, I think knowing Marv. And, and knowing Mr. Wilson, I love Mr. Wilson, the, the owner. Uh, uh, they were players. Uh, Marv was a player's coach, um, and uh, Ralph Wilson was a, a player's owner. Uh, so uh, they was always looking out for the best, you know, uh, interest for the guys. And I think especially involving family, I think they wouldn't have a problem uh, with the guy missing uh, uh, a game for their child, their first child's birth. I would agree with you. That's that's how they rolled. Yeah. So maybe you could talk to us about you know the end of your Bills career. How you know you ended up with Arizona? Did you want to leave? Was it was it something where you, you know they let you go? Uh, how how did how did it end? So my so I had my my first few years I was backing up uh, Mark Kelso. Um, then he wasn't resigned. I started that one year, uh, and then my second year. And that was with the uh, the year I started, didn't have a, a great defensive uh, season. Uh, we brought in the new defensive coordinator, uh, Wade Phillips, uh, mm -hmm. for the following year. So I, Wade was a lot more, had a more aggressive scheme. He had the, the, the quarter system, and everything else. Um, so I love Wade, uh, which everybody else loves Wade as well. And we knew that we were gonna have a really good season and a really good uh, defensive team that year, um, especially with the players that we had. Um, I trained my ass off. I trained my butt off uh, to get in shape and be in shape and to be in the best shape I could. Uh, and I, I caught balls in off season to make sure I could catch some balls. <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't know. I did it. I was in the off season on my own working out. And uh, like two weeks before camp started, I got a twinge in, in my hamstring. Uh, so uh, I had to ease up on that. And then in camp, uh, my other hamstring, I don't know if I was overcompensating or whatever, but I tore a hamstring ligament uh, 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 behind my leg. So that kind of knocked me out of the, the running to be able to really compete uh, for uh, that, uh, the position uh, that I was in. Uh, for the free safety. And obviously, he put Kurt, Kurt in. Um, and, you know, they say he, or some people say he won the competition, but I don't think that there was a competition because I was hurt. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Kurt, Kurt went in, and obviously, everybody knows what he did. He had a great season um, and, 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 and played his butt off. So, uh, and congratulations to him. And that's just football. You know, sometimes you win some, you're on, on the good side, sometimes on the bad side. So, um, really, I, I had, I think I had one year or one year left. So on my contract, I think, I don't know, but, um, but yeah, uh, it was just a matter of, of uh, I did want to come back. Uh, 
so just obviously, I think when you uh, lose your position, you want to come back and, you know, kind of fight for it or, or see if it's, you know, um, uh, still a possibility for you. And I was, I was really okay with uh, being a backup as well, if that was the case, just because I knew how good our team was. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but I, I was released um, and just, uh, I went to Arizona uh, and uh, just, I played two remaining years uh, in my career there, but they were in injury riddled careers. Uh, that's the thing about me. Throughout my whole career, uh, I, I, I was I was injury prone. So if I could if I could catch and if I could stay <laughs> healthy, uh, I think I would have had a much a brighter career. <laughs> yeah, you know, you you being a track star too, uh, speed was obviously big for you, even even when you put on some weight. But uh, hamstrings are just it's a cruel injury because it's just, yeah that, sure that hamstring good. took it took my you know how guys say you, you have that that fifth or sixth gear uh, to kind of get it going when they need it. Uh, mm. uh, that took away my my top years. Uh, that that hamstring injury. That's what happened yeah. to us too, Don. <laughs> yeah, <that's what laughs> so, so if I, you know, if I could catch, if I could run, <laughs> I'd have been a great safety as well. You know, all that. So, so Matt, before we um before we go to the two minute warning where we ask you ten fun questions in two minutes or less, could you just tell us what you're doing today? Yeah. So I've been uh, working in uh, career development uh, of like for the last 19 years, um, uh, working with uh, various organizations. Uh, my most recent job, I was working with a company called Athlife, uh, which they are helping uh, former players in various leagues, uh, professional leagues, whether it be NFL, PA, or uh, the NBA, PA. Uh, I think they recently signed contracts with uh, Major League Soccer and, and uh, I think hockey and baseball. But they help uh, help guys transition just like sexually from the game, help them access resources that are available to them and also help them with, uh, you know, career development, whether it be working on their resumes or their LinkedIn profiles or interview prep and things like that. So great work, uh, great stuff that they do uh, helping the guys. Um, but I'm also transitioning into uh, starting my own business, a coaching business. Um, you know, not not sports coaching, but kind of like life coaching or self development coaching. Uh, working with athletes as well as minorities, helping them in the career development field, helping them with career transitioning, um, as well as personal development. Working uh, working with them uh, with you know a self discipline things like that, helping them accomplish their goals that they Congratulations. have. Congratulations, you're going to do well. I know. I, I've seen your LinkedIn profile and read some other things about what you're doing. And yeah, that's, uh, that's going to really, do great. That's that's good stuff. So now we're going to get to the real important stuff here, Matt. Some 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 fun <laughs> questions to ask you. Uh, Don, you can go ahead. Okay, uh, your most interesting place to watch a Bills or Cardinals game. Let's just say Bills. Most interesting place? Yeah. Uh, what is it? Uh, what in my in my bed be? Most, most <laughs> sure, <yeah>. it can <laughs> be. <laughs> that's, that's a fine answer. That leads to a couple other questions, but I'll skip <laughs> past that. Uh, three people, Matt, that you'd want to have dinner with, dead or alive? Ooh, uh, that would be ooh, Miles Davis. Uh, Malcolm X and three people. Oh, um, what's his name? Vince Lombardi. All right. Him. All right. All right. Nice, nice mix there. Um, yeah. so you're entering an arena. You're a big deal. Dry ice. What is your entrance song? Ooh, uh, mm. it have to be something by Chardé. Uh, mm. Nice. Uh, what's the best concert you've ever been to? A uh, new edition concert. Nice. All right. Uh, thinking back to your Buffalo days, do you recall your, your uh, favorite restaurant and the dish that you got there? Ooh, Vera, you know, we didn't go out. You know what? I, we loved a restaurant near downtown called Mei Jin. Uh, oh, yeah, Mei Jin Chinese food. Yes, yes. We yes. uh, got Elmwood. It was great. Are they still there? Uh, they have one on Main Street in Amherst because that was my dad's favorite restaurant because nice. there was one at the top of the street that I grew up on. There were yeah. two locations. Majen, that's funny. I haven't thought of that in a long time. Yeah, there we love Majen. Yeah, that's was really good. Go As a kid, uh, what was your favorite cartoon? Uh, that was uh, Woody Woodpecker uh, would be uh, one of my favorites. Okay. It's a popular food, but you hate it. Popular food, but I hate it. Uh, would uh clams yeah yeah sure no no sure. not clams uh oysters oysters you're yeah. no go on oysters slippery no go <laughs> on oysters. No. uh most annoying fan base in the nfl kansas city 
Mm-hmm. Kansas City or Miami? Popular, right. popular choices on this podcast from former yeah, players. That spans decades. Yep, there. two more here. Uh, can you drive a stick shift, Matt? Yes. My wife taught me after we bought our first car together. And that's and not home. You're not the first person to say that your wife taught them how to drive stick shift. That's <laughs> kind of interesting. Uh, last one here. Can you sing us five seconds of the UCLA fight song? Uh, I can give you the, the tune. I don't know the words to our fight song. I don't know. It's fight, fight, fight at the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's good enough. That works. All right. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for your time, Matt. We really enjoyed it. Hopefully you get up to Buffalo to come see a game. You know what? Uh, we are planning on it because I know the, the stadium is about to be, uh, we're building a new stadium. So yep. I'm going to bring my, my kids um, up to, to see it uh, before they take down the Doe one. Yeah, you have three, yeah. Yes, there's three more next, seasons. Yeah, so uh, I think we're planning on coming out for or what we want. We want to come out for the, I think they have the the Bills alumni weekend or something yep. um, near the beginning of the season. So we want to try to see if we can do that uh, this year. Great. Great. Yeah. yeah, I hope that happens. And uh, this has been a lot of fun, Matt. Thanks for getting caught up with us. And uh, yeah, and good luck with uh, your business. And we'll be staying in contact. Yeah, take care, Matt. Thank man. you very much. Thank you for having me.